Well, international aid efforts are being ramped up to Tonga. We're three days on from that massive undersea volcanic eruption, and the tsunami that followed has cut off nearly all communications to the country. Tonga's in the South Pacific. It's made up of 170 islands. 105,000 people live there, and 80% of them have been affected by Saturday's eruption. As you can see from these satellite images, the island where the volcano was is now submerged. The eruption lasted eight minutes and sent cloud and ash 20 kilometers into the air. It blanketed Tonga. The sonic boom was so loud it could be heard 2,300 kilometers away in New Zealand and over 9,700 kilometers away in Alaska. This was 400 kilometers away in Fiji. Clouds. Check all of that. While the eruption was so big it severed Tonga's only fiber optic cable which connects the country to the world, cutting all communications. Some of that has now been restored. This was also the impact. Waves nearly a meter high flooded the capital. Other videos show people running for higher ground. We know some buildings were completely inundated and there are concerns people living in low-lying villages may have been swept away. Significant damage has also been reported on the western coast of the main island, Tonga Tapu, which is covered in a thick layer of ash. Katie Greenwood is coordinating the Red Cross response from Fiji. These are her concerns. The good news for us is that it's, it, we believe that from the information we can put together, uh, that it is not as catastrophic in those major population centres as we first thought that it might be. So, that, so that's really good news. But the team there on the ground, what they're doing at the moment is they've been supporting evacuations during the immediate crisis of the eruption and the tsunami uh, warning. They'll be doing first aid as required. And now the job will be to assess the damage and they have uh, urgent relief items required for households for things like clean water, shoring up their homes and shelters if they've been damaged, um, and blankets and lamps and things like that, urgent equipment, they'll be distributing that as required to people. Uh, we're also really keen to understand what the impact is on clean drinking water and on food gardens. While the eruption was felt much further than Tonga, it triggered a tsunami warning across the Pacific, in New Zealand and Australia, in the US, even in Chile, nearly 10,000 kilometers away. Also, according to Reuters, two people drowned off a beach in northern Peru because of high waves from the tsunami. Boats in New Zealand were also damaged. And then this was the Fijian capital, Suva. Huge waves crashed on shore and flooded some areas. Anna Jane Lagi is a Tongan student in Fiji, and she explains the concerns back home. The most pressing concern would be the water, as a lot of Tongans uh, collected rainwater in their tanks and boiled them for drinking water, but that has been contaminated by the ash. A lot of housing needs to be fixed. So that's what we're looking at right now, masks and protection um, because of the air. It's a tragic event, but it has really shown the unity between the Tongans all over the world, especially since we cannot contact our families directly. We're really just holding on to each other and trying to keep in touch for any sign of what's happening there. Um, but yeah, it's just doing what we can, waiting, hoping, and slowly good news is trickling in. Well, surveillance flights from Australia and New Zealand reported significant damage with houses thrown around in the capital. Both countries are airdropping emergency supplies, but thick cloud is preventing planes from actually landing. This is New Zealand's Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. What uh, the Orion is doing is, is a reconnaissance. Uh, it is, as are the Australians, uh, looking to undertake an assessment uh, from the air uh, of the outer islands in particular, uh, and then, of course, provide that information uh, to the people of Tonga and Tongan authorities. Ash cloud um, does pose a risk. Um, the view on departure was that they would be able to undertake that, that overflight reconnaissance, though, and provide that really critical information back. Well, experts have called the eruption a one in a thousand year event. These images give you a sense of the scale. This image was taken on the 2nd of January, 13 days before the eruption. Then this was taken shortly after the eruption on January the 15th. The volcano is completely submerged.
this shows you the northern part of Tonga's main island a day before the eruption. A day after it, villages were no longer visible. Here's the volcanologist David Pyle from the University of Oxford. There are many underwater volcanoes, but this, on, in terms of scale, this is the probably the largest uh, underwater volcano eruption that we've seen for the last few decades. Um, there was a similar sort of eruption at Krakatoa about three years ago. But the presence of water, uh, a small amount of water in, and lots of hot rock means that you get much more violent explosions. The water is rapidly converted to steam um, as it comes into contact with the magma. It shatters the volcanic rocks. It produces much more fine ash material, but also the steam expansion drives the explosion itself. So it's a really very violent eruption. Well, there are other concerns too. Tonga's had just one COVID-19 case throughout the pandemic, one. There are fears international aid deliveries, though, could change that. Tonga's deputy head of mission in Australia has said, we don't want to bring in another wave, a tsunami of COVID-19. Well, let's speak to Lydia Lewis, who's a reporter for Radio New Zealand Pacific. She's with us from Auckland. Lydia, thank you for your time. I wonder what you're hearing from people in Tonga. We've been trying to get in contact every minute of every day here. We actually have uh, a member of our team who has family in Tonga. Uh, he has heard back that his family is safe from officials. But in terms of being able to contact people on the ground, communication is very limited. At the moment, only a handful of people have satellite phones, which seems to be the only way of communicating outside of Tonga. I've been trying to speak with the uh, New Zealand and High Commissioner in Tonga, um, who is expected to call me today as well. So we are on standby for that. He has said that, uh, yeah, there, there is a lot of uh, debris along the coastline that it is not um, looking great at the moment. But we're looking for some more news later today on that. In terms of getting into Tonga, the New Zealand Defence Force um, is going to be sending uh, a flight, another flight, uh, sometime this week. But news, Justin, I've just spoken with the Defence Force, and they say that the C-130 Hercules, which was supposed to take off today, uh, has been delayed due to uh, a blanket of ash on the runway. So that's going to take off uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow or maybe even on Thursday. And how is, how, is, how is New Zealand trying to navigate a desire to help, but a desire to not impact the COVID-19 situation in Tonga? Well, Tonga is COVID free, much like many countries in the Pacific. Uh, so everyone who goes into Tonga for this effort will be fully vaccinated and will also uh, have had a PCR test as well. So they have high vaccination rates there too, over 80%. And they've also had their borders closed since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, obviously, the New Zealand government is not wanting to create any issues there with the COVID pandemic, but since the response so far from Tonga in light of the pandemic has been uh, very strong, closing the borders, vaccinating uh, people, this is a good scenario to start with in terms mm. of delivering aid. And New Zealand has a large Tongan community. I wonder how it's responding to this hugely concerning development. Yes, uh, community members are about to meet. I've been speaking with church leaders uh, as well. They uh, have been responding ma uh, incredible amounts of support already swinging into action. Uh, just overnight, I received a message from one of the church members here in Auckland who said that the group is meeting uh, and they are going to form um, the Aotearoa Tonga Relief Committee, uh, which will be formed soon as well. So preparations are underway. Um, and it is not just uh, Tong the Tonga Tongan community in New Zealand, but uh, aid groups across New Zealand are offering support, inundating government ministers with uh, support as well. I've also uh, just spoken with another group in New Zealand who have pulled together 10,000 water bottles and are not sure how they're going to send them to Tonga. As you know, water supply um, is another big issue. So a massive, massive uh, pull together of support uh, for our, uh, our family in Tonga. The eruption was felt much further afield than Tonga. The sonic boom was heard in neighboring Fiji and a tsunami caused these waves in the Fijian capital, Suva. 
we know some areas were flooded. Let's learn more about this. The journalist Chirianne Wilson is in Suva. Um, Chirianne, did you hear the eruption? Yes, we did. So a little bit before 6 p.m. on Saturday, uh, we were actually in the office preparing the 6 o'clock news bulletin for Fiji 1 when uh, we received information out of Tonga, uh, including videos of the of that volcanic eruption. So immediately after that, a little bit after 6, people in Fiji were reporting, hearing sort of a loud uh, thud, thunderous noise from the sky. Um, assuming we had not received confirmation, but assuming it was um, coming from Tonga, from the earthquake uh, area. And how soon after you heard the sonic boom did the waves arrive in Fiji? Um, immediately after, uh, say about, uh, I think it was an hour after, we managed to get some pictures out of, not in the capital Suva, but uh, in the Eastern Division, where we have uh, smaller uh, atoll islands in the Lao group. Um, that is uh, the closest area to Tonga uh, from Fiji. On a clear day, if you stand in Tongatapu, the capital, you can see one of the islands on a Lao. So the islands uh, around uh, the Lao group are reporting um, uh, like storm surges uh, and also tsunami waves uh, just hitting the islands and, and inundating those islands. And tell me about the Tongan community in Fiji. This must be a terribly worrying time for them. Yes, it is. Um, we have a large uh, Tongan community here because of uh, the fact that we have the regional university based here in Suva, the University of the South Pacific. So we have thousands and thousands of Tongans who, who live here. And also considering the historical relationship that we have with Tonga, a lot of Fijians um, still have Tongan relations and some still carry Tonga names uh, because of that uh, historical factor to our relations. But we do have thousands of Tongans living here. Um, since Saturday, we have been able to speak to Tongans uh, at the university. We particularly spoke to this mom who studies at the university here, but hasn't managed to speak to her husband and children and doesn't know where they are. Uh, we still haven't managed to get a, to get someone from Tonga. Uh, media colleagues we can't reach because communications is down. I know that has been widely reported. And hopefully uh, throughout the next few days, um, New Zealand has pledged to go in and conduct an aerial survey uh, of assessments of what the situation has been. And I, I know that uh, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has given the undertaking that they might uh, first and, and foremost, try and um, get the communications line uh, going again in Tonga as soon as possible. And Chirianne, are you able at all to assess the degree of devastation in Tonga? Um, we're still waiting for, it would be premature of me to assume, but you can imagine these uh, tsunami waves from a volcano that was very, very close to the most pop populous island, which is which has about 100,000 people. Um, and Tonga is not uh, is uh, flat land. You can't, as they describe it, you can't, you can imagine these waves coming through, but there's no tall structures or mountains or hills that stand in the waves of, that stand in the way of the waves and people. So we can only imagine the destruction. There's, as we've seen through some pictures, uh, water waves that's gone up to uh, hitting almost to the top of uh, houses so when they when you think about when they say they have to run they don't have anywhere elevated to run to so they only have to run uh, as further as they can inland